Welcome to Beer Stars from Beer Star Brewhouse. This video is about water treatment, water chemicals, uh, what you need to add and uh, how much. Remember, if you don't want to miss any videos from Beer Stars, please click like and subscribe down the corner. You'll have other channels and you get the newest videos in your YouTube feed and you make me very happy. Also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. So, minerals, water treatment, water chemistry, um, you can call it a lot of things, but, uh, but the essential part is um, pH and the minerals you need to add, or you need to work with anyway. Um, I'll run through them. Um, there are five minerals we have to talk about, and then of course the pH. Uh, and in the end, I'll tell you how to use this as well in your brewing. So everything I'm talking about here is not something I made up. Uh, it's from uh, John Palmer's How to Brew uh, and other sources as well. But this is a great place to start. You need all, all the basic you need is, is in here. So uh, I really recommend you to, to get this book if you don't already have it. Okay, so um, yeah. Water is 95% uh, of your beer. Um, it has a huge impact on flavor of the beer. And water chemistry and water treatment, it sounds like it's very difficult, but it's really not. It's actually pretty simple if you follow these guidelines. I've written them all down and you can find a link uh, to my website in the description. Um, and in the end, I'll tell you how you can actually uh, apply this into your own brewing. It's not that hard, trust me. Yeah, as I said, five minerals you have to, uh, you have to know and you have to uh, work with in your water chemistry, your water treatment uh, when brewing beer. And the first one is calcium. So calcium is a yeast nutrition. Um, you have to add it in a range of 50 to 150 ppm, that's parts per million. Um, too much calcium can cause problems for the yeast actually, but uh, it has to be in there for the yeast as well. If you add too much, it can also give you a cloudy beer, but, uh, but calcium is also really important to stabilize uh, alpha amylase and also the pH, especially at higher uh, uh, mashing temperatures. And if you don't add calcium to your beer, you can actually get a, a more watery beer. Um, so it's really important, but uh, yeah, it's not, it's not one of the minerals that you can really play with to get a different kind of beer. It just has to be there in order to make good quality beer. The next one is magnesium. It has a range of uh, 0 to 40 ppm. Um, it's a nutrient for the yeast and 5 to 10 ppm is, uh, is, is the ideal range. If you get over 80 ppm, you can actually get this uh, tart, sour, astringent flavor in your beer um, and you don't want that. So you have to be careful. Magnesium also comes from the malt itself. So this is one of them, actually one of the minerals that you don't need to add to your beer because the malt would actually provide what you need. You can add a little bit uh, if you want to go to the higher range around 20 to 40 ppm actually enhances the flavor of the specialty malts and will make porter and stouts more complex and more full. But, uh, but yeah, as I said, the malts contribute with uh, magnesium. Uh, so it's, yeah, you can actually exceed the 80 ppm uh, if you go to the high range. So um, be careful of that. Number three, sodium. It has a range of zero to 100 ppm. And sodium actually uh, promotes the malt flavors and the sweetness, especially at the higher uh, ppm values, uh, 74 to 100 ppm. But 
when sodium reacts with calcium or sulfate or magnesium, it can actually, or combined with those, it can actually uh, create this metal flavor in your beer. And you don't want that. And actually, most times if you can taste metal in uh, commercial beers, it's probably because of this and not actually metal in the beer. Um, so I often have a very low, uh, I'm in the low range uh, with, uh, with, with the sodium, exactly just because of this. If I want to promote the malt flavors in my beer, I focus on chlorides. Chlorides, they have a, a range about uh, 50 to 150. And what chloride does is, yeah, yeah promoting malt flavors. Um, so yeah, it makes the malt shine. So multi beers actually has to have a higher chloride. Um, um, yeah, contain more chloride, but it has to be in a specific ratio to the sulfates. And I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, if you brew lagers and uh, Kölsch and other German very light beers and you want a light water profile, you can go lower uh, to about uh, 20 ppm. Uh, yeah, but, but, but don't go lower than that. Um, and actually, yeah, and if, and if you have to brew these uh, types of beer, um, these more forward beers, you have to at least double up the amount of chloride to sulfate. And that leads me into number five, that's sulfates. It has a, sulfate has a range of, uh, of about uh, 50 to 150 for multi beers and for hoppy beers, 150 to 400 ppm. So if you have a multi beer, um, you can, if you add 100 ppm chloride, you should only add 50 ppm or even lower um, sulfate. But that would be a good, uh, a good ratio for a multi beer. But it, again, if you have a lager, you can go lower on both of them a German lager or a Kölsch, uh, you can go lower on both of them, but you don't, you don't need to. Uh, if you just have that ratio of uh, two to one with chloride being uh, the dominant, it will work out great. But if you have a hop forward beer, um, you should actually go the other way around. You should have more sulfate than uh, chlorides. Um, and again, two to one, sulfide being the higher one, the dominant one. So uh, most pale ales, they start at about 150 ppm and go up to yeah 400. If it's really a, a West Coast IPA with uh, clear and crisp bitterness, you can go uh, 100 chloride, 400 sulfide, uh, sulfate. Um, yeah, so that's four to one actually. But you can you can you can adjust the sulfate depending on how much you want your hops to shine and how bright and clear you want them to be. But go from uh, from two to one, three to one, four to one if you really want yeah just the hops to really shine and the and the malts to shine less. You have to be aware uh, noble hops can actually. Um, they don't always work that well with a high sulfate content. So if you brew a, a Czech lager and you bump up the sulfate, you can actually get, you can enhance the sulfur flavor. So beware of that. Um, but but that's only according to Noble Hop and Sars and, so, and stuff like that. So that was the minerals. Now we're going to talk a little bit, little bit about pH. Well. I guess most uh, brewers they know about the PPH in the mash. It has to be between uh, 5.2 to uh, 5.6. Um, and that's right. Uh, for the mash, that's the range and it's really important for efficiency, but doesn't really affect the, the flavor. But when the beer is finished, 
the pH has a huge impact on the flavor as well, um, and also food safety. So all breweries uh, that make quality beer, they, they control the pH in the final beer as well. So it's not only in the mash. It also has to be controlled in the final beer. Uh, it has to be lower than 4.6, 4.7 uh, to be uh, food safe. Beers will always go there. Um, yeah, well, the dry hop can actually uh, bump up the pH. Uh, so, so a, a, a deeper can actually uh, can actually get over a 4.7 just by itself. But that's another story. You have to check the pH in the final beer. Uh, for food safety, but also for flavor. If you have uh, lagers, uh, other light beers uh, or pale beers, uh, hoppy beers, they, the malt flavors and the hops will shine more if it has a pH around uh, 4 to 4.4. Um, and dark beers, especially porters, stouts or dark double box, they, uh, the specialty malts, they shine more through, they give a more complex uh, flavor if the pH is around uh, 4.3 to 4.7 actually. Um, yeah, so that's the range for normal beers. Then you have sour beers, you can go all the way down to 3. Uh, most of them are about 3.5. Um, so you can actually make a sour beer just by adding lactic acids. So that was uh, water treatment. Um, now, how to apply this? Well, I use uh, Brewfather as my brewing program, and I can uh, put in my uh, my source water. Um, if I brew dark beers, I just use my tap water. If I brew uh, IPAs or lagers, I use my uh, uh, RO filter. Um, my tap water, I just I wrote to the to the water supply in my area, and they uh, gave me a, a report that I just added into my my brewing program, Brewfather, and make that my source. And then I I add in a target profile. Uh, often I make them myself from everything I just told you here, um, and then just click auto, and it tells me what to add. Uh, of all the different minerals. But if you don't uh, have access to Brewfather, um, you can use uh, brewwater.com. There's a link in the description. A brewer's friend has a great uh, water chemistry uh, calculator as well. And I actually use that a lot too, because when people write to me and ask me questions, I don't have their recipe. Um, so, so I can't just put it in Brewfather and, and click Auto, and then I got the numbers. I have to, uh, I have to, uh, yeah, use Brewer's Friend uh, that water chemistry calculator, and then add in the numbers there. And yeah, it's actually pretty easy when you first, uh, if you get started with this. But you have to get a water report. Most uh, most water supplier they will just give the report to you. From my local area, I was missing a bicarbonate in the water report, so I had to write to them uh, again. Uh, and it took a little time, but they found the numbers for me. Um, and they are pretty happy to help, actually. And from what I hear <laughs> from around the world, they are always willing to help. So write to them and get those reports. That's a great way to start. You don't need an RO filter. It's a great way to start just by having the water report. Um, just to see what you're working with. Um, yeah, and then start building up some cool uh, water profiles for yourself. Just to start off with, focus on the chloride and sulfate radio. Um, that's a great way to start. And uh, you can also find a lot of water profiles out there from Dusseldorf or, or London or whatever, or, or, or Prague, um, if you want to brew uh, Check Lager if you can find the water profile for Prague and just type it into a Brewer's Friend and bang, you have what you need. It's 
actually that simple. So, so don't hesitate. Um, everything you need to know you can find in here. And there's a lot of other great books out there. Uh, John Palmer also wrote a book just on water treatment. So there are a lot of options to, uh, to get started with this. And it's not that hard. So you just have to, uh, yeah, jump into it. I guess that was it. If you stick around to the end, there'll be two videos up here that YouTube wants you to see. Also follow me on, on uh, YouTube here and click like and subscribe and everything. If you have any questions, write to me in the comments. Also write to me how you go about all this uh, water treatment stuff. Uh, so how you're doing, how you get started with it. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, other than that, just have a happy brewing out there. Thank you.